Well, hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. Surprise! I am filming a Friday Reads video on Thursday, which means it will actually be posted on Friday and be a true Friday Reads video. That is not how I usually do things. I usually film my Friday Reads on Friday and then post it on Saturday. I'm not doing it that way this week because I am hoping that I will finish two books tonight and then I can do my monthly wrap-up for April tomorrow instead. That's the plan. We'll see how that goes. I'll get into the actual Friday Reads portion a little later in the video. You may notice I've also kind of turned the camera a little bit. The reason is I want to show this off in a second. It's something that I got as part of Independent Bookstore Day, which was last Saturday, April 24th. I hope you celebrated. I hope you had fun. I have some really fun items to share in my May book haul. When we get around to that, I'm just going to flash them at you <laughs> right now. If you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, you have already seen what they are, but I will be getting to those and I can't wait to talk about them later in this month. Really excited. I went in a little bit blind. I had been thinking in my head, like, what am I going to get for Independent Bookstore Day? What am I going to get? And then I decided to just kind of go in and let the store I was in guide me. And that is exactly what ended up happening. I went to Montana Book Company in Helena and Charlie, one of the co-owners, was kind enough to take me around the store and give me some recommendations because they have a checklist for 2021, kind of like a bingo card throughout the year. And I don't usually do those, but I feel like since I don't have a reading goal, it would be kind of fun. And one of those things is a staff selection. And Charlie was kind enough to give me some staff selections. And I found one thing that had been recently recommended to me by Sean the Book Maniac. And it was, it was just really nice. And I love that store. I am going to try to find some ways to support my local to Missoula stores soon. One of them is on my t-shirt today, Fact and Fiction. That is a great store if you're ever in Missoula, but my favorite is still Montana Book Company in Helena. But anyway, I'm glad I had a wonderful independent bookstore day celebrating with them and my husband. And we, because we're all vaccinated, we got to spend a little bit of time with family in Helena as well. And that was really nice. I'm gonna show you this poster really quickly. So pardon any awkward edits. <laughs> So as you can see, this is the Independent Bookstores of the United States poster. I picked it up slowly throughout the week. I have been coloring in any spots for places I have been. I might try to do a little bit more of a close-up in a second so you can see some of the detail. Some people like to tour the country and visit like baseball stadiums and things like that. This is what kind of what I do. So it's a nice aspirational thing for me. I don't anticipate that I will get to all of these, but it's still nice to think about. Here is a bit of a closer look. At the map, you can see Seattle, where I have only been to two bookstores. I need to do better there. Montana, where I have been to a couple. Just looking around, here is San Francisco. I used to live in San Francisco, but I very much stayed with Books, Inc., which was my uh, bookstore of choice when I lived there. So I have not been to, I've never been to Green Apple Books, so I need to get back there. And that's exactly what the point of this is. I really like it. So again, I hope you had a really great independent bookstore day. I hope you celebrated. The big book news this week was, of course, the Women's Prize shortlist, which was announced. I posted my video uh, the day I'm filming this, but that's yesterday when it's posted. I will link it down below in the description box. If you have not checked out the shortlist, you may feel free to check it out in that video down there. I've had a lot of good comments. A lot of people are not really disappointed that Luster didn't make the list. A lot of people share my thought that Burnt Sugar probably should have made the list. I've heard some varied things about Detransition Baby. Reaction continues to be very mixed for Transcendent Kingdom. There are some people who agree with me that it was a wonderful book and some people who just really don't. I love it, so I don't know. A lot of love for The Vanishing Half, but most of the love seems to be directed at Piranesi, which I wasn't quite expecting. It feels like this book is really kind of blowing up and going places, and that's kind of nice to see. I need to get to this at some point soon, or hopefully soon. The other big thing that happened this week for me was, of course, Sunday was Oscar night. I'm a huge Oscar nerd. I watched it. I enjoyed it. And the big winner of the night was Nomadland, which will come around again when we get to the actual Friday Reads portion of this video. Suffice to say, I'm really happy that it won Best Picture and Best Director and Best Actress. I really struggled trying to choose a Best Actress winner for my own ballot because I feel like all five of the nominees in Best Actress this year were worthy of a win. But what I came down to at the end was that I feel like Nomadland really only works because of Frances McDormand. You can't say only because I think Chloe Zhao has really great direction, but 
a lot of that is carried by Frances McDormand and her performance. So I'm really glad she ended up winning. One thing I did differently this year that I don't usually do when I'm watching the Oscars is I kind of put my phone away. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that I didn't participate in an Oscar ballot. Usually when I do, there's a lot of online conversation going on during the Oscars. Usually I'm following Twitter so I can see what people are saying about what's happening. And it felt like this year, because I wasn't in an Oscar pool, and just because of general like work stress, life stress, things like that, I felt like I was really glad not to have to stress out about picking a ballot and what I thought would win or anything like that. I ended up doing exactly the same as I do in years when I do stress out. So maybe that's a life lesson right there. <laughs> but it was really nice. I put my phone away and I got to actually talk to my husband. And that was really nice. It was, it was exactly what I needed. Sometimes you need those reminders to just put down your phone and enjoy something. And that was really nice about Oscar night. And actually my husband even said when it was over that he felt like it was the first time he and I had actually gotten to watch the Oscars together because usually I'm distracted between a bunch of different things. And that again is a good life lesson, at least for me. In terms of other things, I don't know if this is a YouTube problem, if it's an internet problem, if it's a problem with my laptop, which is really old and getting annoying. <laughs> but I have been trying to do subtitles for all of my videos, like closed captioning, and I haven't been able to do the last two because for whatever reason, it's been taking a really long time for YouTube to process the captions that I can then edit, and I don't want to just create my own. So I haven't gotten the last two. Hopefully this is something that's going to be fixed or get better. Uh, it seems like a lot of people had actually started using the closed captioning for the videos, so I feel terrible. But please know I'm going to work on it and hopefully it will get better. I, I don't know what's causing the delays, but it seems like it takes about 24 hours for things to process. And the only guidance I can get on this is that it tends to take longer to process if the audio quality is not good. But the audio quality is exactly the same as what it was before, for better or worse. And it used to only take about an hour after I uploaded a video to be able to edit the closed captions. And it's just not right now. But I did notice a big improvement once I started doing closed captioning and subtitles, which really proved to me that it was a worthwhile goal for the channel this year. When I first started doing subtitles or closed captioning for my videos, only about 7% of the people who watched them were using the subtitles or the closed captioning. And by the end of last week, that was up to anywhere from 20 to 25% of the people who watched my videos. So clearly, it's a really good thing to do, and I feel awful <laughs> that I haven't been able to do it for my last two videos, so I'm hoping that I will be able to get back to it and that things will be back on track with that shortly. So if you are somebody who was using the subtitles and the closed captioning, it's not that I gave up. It's going to come back, I promise, and I'm sorry. Now let's get into the actual Friday Reads portion of this video. As of right now, I have not finished anything for the week, but that's going to change. And that's one reason I want to make sure I get my uh, monthly wrap-up done tomorrow, because I think I'll have things to talk about tomorrow. I should be done with two books by then. The first one that I should be finishing for sure is Nomadland by Jessica Bruder. This is something I am listening to on audio, and I only have 35 minutes left. So that's super doable, and I should be ready to talk about it in my monthly wrap-up, which I will hopefully be able to film tomorrow. We'll see how that goes. I'm continuing to really enjoy this book. I really loved the movie, and the book is very different. The movie had been criticized a lot because it omits a lot of the Amazon details that are in the book and things like that, but I'll have a lot to say about that when I do my Nomadland book versus movie video, which is coming. I have been like a total nerd taking notes throughout the process about things that are similar, things that are different, and ways in which this nonfiction book was adapted to create a storyline. And I think one of the best things about the movie is that it really does capture the lives of these people. And at, at one point in the book, Jessica Bruder talks about how a lot of the nomads don't want to be seen as victims. They don't want to be seen as beaten down people who are victims of the system, even though some of them in many ways are. And I feel like if the movie had leaned into the ways in which they are taken advantage of by companies like 
Amazon, it really would have played up that aspect. So it's kind of a lose-lose situation, but I'll have a lot more to say once I actually finish the book and once I do that book versus movie comparison. I'm anticipating that when I have my monthly reading wrap-up, I'll talk a little bit more about it, but suffice to say for now, I am almost done and I'm really enjoying this book. I am someone who is anti-Amazon as much as possible and I'm really vibing with the sentiments of this book that tie into that and just the spirit of the book and the movie as well. It's funny that there's a bit of a convergence this week where I finally got around to listening to the audiobook and the Oscars happened and it won Best Picture and Best Director and Best Actress and it's funny when that happens in life. You can't plan it, it just happens. <laughs> the other book that I'm hoping I will have finished by tomorrow is The Yield by Tara June Winch. This is my buddy read with Sean the Book Maniac. He is finished. I have about 60 pages left. I fell, I had already been struggling to keep up a little bit last week and we had a bad family thing happen this week. So I fell a little bit more behind, but I think I can get the last 60 pages done tonight. So that's my goal. And because I'm not done with it yet, I will have a lot more to say about it when I do my monthly reading wrap up. But I will say, I continue to really love this book. I know a lot of people are reading this in April because it's become the de facto Aussie April pick for a lot of people. And some of the people who are reading it are a little less enthused or took a lot of time to start getting into it. I have just been captivated from the beginning of it. And Sean has as well. And this could be my favorite book of the year so far. Apologies to the prophets, but I just really love this book. If it sticks the landing, I think it will take over the top spot so far. And I'll have a lot more to say about it when I'm done, because I also, once I'm done, I really want to check in with Sean the Book Maniac, and because he's my buddy reader for this, give him feedback. But I just love it. And Jacqueline from Six Minutes for Me had commented on one of my videos to talk about how there is an explanation for the cover design at the back of the book since I was so enamored of the cover design and I skipped and read that and it's funny because the comment of the person who designed the jacket has actually tied into my impression of the book and I can't really talk about that but it talks about absence and presence and absence being just as important as what is present and I feel like there's a really important aspect of the book that is the same thing. Somebody who is absent is important and has a sort of presence because of that. And it's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful book. I really love it. So if you have not read The Yield by Tara June Wench yet, I, I highly recommend it, even though I have not finished. I have to, just that last 60 pages to go. Should be very doable tonight. And then when I do my monthly reading wrap-up, if I don't finish, I might hold off until Monday to film it and then you would see it on Tuesday but you know I'm hoping that I will be able to film it tomorrow fingers crossed we'll see how that goes by the time I do my wrap-up I should be done with both Nomadland and The Yield and then I get to look ahead to May and decide what I'm gonna do I have a couple of things I want to try to fit in I have two books on NetGalley that I want to try to get to. One is Paradise Nevada by Dario Diofebe, and the other is Early Morning Riser, and I can't think of the name of the author. So I think once I finish The Yield, I'm going to try to knock both of those things out quickly. I also need to finish this book whose name I'm afraid to say <laughs> because YouTube once flagged my channel for language when I didn't say anything, so it made me afraid to say the name of this book. But I want to try to finish this as well. I'm a little more than halfway through. It's a graphic collection of cartoons by Alison Bechdel, who is the author of Fun Home. And I wasn't loving it, which is probably why I've been dragging through it so much. I want to try to finish this. I may spend some time this weekend just finishing it so I can cross it off my list. Maybe get those two books off of NetGalley. And then I also really want to get back to Infinite Country by Patricia Engel. These are my immediate plans to try to knock out quickly in the month of May, and then we'll see where I go from there. I had had problems with Scribd in the month of March because I was using it for all of my booktube prize reading, and because when you use Scribd a lot, they tend to move titles to like a reserved place where you have to wait until they're available again. That happened to me again this month. So I had planned what my next audiobook was going to be when I finished Nomadland, and it's not available until May 17th now. So I'm going to have to come up with a different audiobook plan, but I don't know what that's going to be right now. 
I'll find out. <laughs> I'll finish Nomadland today. That part is absolutely doable. And then I'll make a decision about what the next audiobook will be. It's just a shame because the one I really wanted to listen to is not going to be available until May 17th. But what can you do? It is what it is. And then I think my big project in May, and I'll talk more about this when I do film my reading wrap-up for April, my big project is likely to be Gone with the Wind because I want to do something for my Pulitzer Prize project and that is the one that I want to follow Lonesome Dove. Actually, my copy of it is right behind me, so why don't I just grab it and hold it here for you. Yeah, it's a really big, 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 big book. It's a brick. You could hurt somebody with this. So this is probably going to be my project for May once I get some of those quick things out of the way. So hopefully I will be able to start this by the end of the first week of May and really get into it. It is how many pages? It is 1,037 pages. So that's a lot. And that's why I want to make sure I get some things off my plate really quickly and then give myself time to focus on this. It should be doable. I just need to make absolutely certain that if I start Gone with the Wind, I will be able to have it done by the end of the month so I can focus on my LGBTQ books in June because that's what I do and I don't want to skip a year. But I do want to make sure I get another book in for my Pulitzer Prize project, as I said, and I think this would be a really interesting follow-up to Lonesome Dove. And I've been kind of holding out until I can get to it and May seems like a good window to do that since I don't have anything else going on. And I'm going to try to grab it. I feel like this is also interesting, even outside of the Pulitzer Prize project, because this is, this is a very beloved book, and it's a very beloved movie, and yet there are aspects of it that seem like they could be problematic, and I think it would be interesting to interrogate those things and dive in and see for myself what I think of it. So that's the plan, and I think that's everything that I have for this Friday Reads video that is actually being posted on a Friday. The world has gone mad. Can you believe it? <laughs> Anyway, I would love to hear what you've had going on in your reading life this week, what you've read, what you've finished, what you've DNF'd, if anything, and just let me know in the comment section down below. As always, I really appreciate your time. It is always wonderful to know that there are people out there who actually want to watch whatever it is I do here. So thank you, and I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.